Hello, everyone, and welcome into Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid TV. I am Davis Maddock, joined by George Kurtz. Craig Mish is on location at the MLB All Star Game this week. Uh, he got to see the absolute travesty of uh, Major League Baseball, basically cheating Kyle Schwarber. Uh, I'll, I'll never, I will never forgive Kyle Schwarber for not beating Albert Pujols. And uh, you know, depending on which angle of the broadcast you saw, one of Kyle Schwarber's home runs, maybe. Didn't count, George, but uh, we're here. It is Tuesday, July 19th. Rookies across the NFL. Some training camps are starting today, so I expect we are going to start getting lots of news from those training camps soon. But, uh, yeah, we're here. The Home Run Derby out of the way. The All-Star Game tonight. So how are we doing, bud? Yeah, like you uh, wasn't thrilled that they uh, apparently they can't count uh, as far as Major League Baseball is concerned here. I, you know, I thought it watching. I'm like, you know, you, you don't see a tracker going up. That ball wasn't gone. It's strange how they and they all cheat anyway. Remember when they throw, when they do this, you're not supposed to throw a pitch until the ball lands. And these guys, you know, as soon as they get swing, the ball's up in the air. They're swinging again. So it was all screwed up as it is. Some of these guys were swinging well uh, a second or two past the final buzzer or two, and those home runs seemed to count. So it was just a strange situation there. Uh, but yeah, Schwarber. I don't know. He didn't look comfortable there, and I had money on him. I had a parlay with him and Alonzo to win the first round, but he didn't look comfortable at all last night. And I think part of it was like, you know what? I don't think he wanted to beat Pujols in, in some ways. Yep. Not that he was throwing it, but I don't think he wanted to beat him. I think you. I think you're a hundred percent right. I think there was a coordinated effort to give Pujols, you know, a little bit of a swan song there with, uh, you know, the uh, the lights shining. I I'm I'm upset. I'm upset. Rob Manfred, you'll be hearing. You'll be hearing from me. I'll be writing a letter to the commissioner's office about the results of Schwarber v. Pools. Juan Soto is the eventual winner of the home run derby in the final round. Although, I mean, I think pretty clearly Julio Rodriguez in the mind of uh, in the mind of the average baseball fan, I think he looks like a winner. Absolutely comes out crushing in the first two rounds. I think in the end, the way it shook out, he ended up hitting like something like 19 more home runs than Soto did over the course of their matches. So, you know, uh, big, big night for Juan Soto, big night for Julio Rodriguez. The MLB All-Star Game will be decided by a home run derby if the game is tied after nine innings. I, I actually like this. I, I think this is fine. Now, the silly part of this, George, of course, is the fact that, uh, you know, this time it counts. The MLB All-Star Game actually determines home field advantage for the World Series. So that is a bit ridiculous. Uh, Rodney Hudson announces he will play this season for the Arizona Cardinals. Deion Sanders will donate half of his salary to complete JSU's new football facility. And apparently, Brett is telling me I'm wrong. They got rid of that rule, which, by the way, was one of the dumbest rules in professional sports. Uh, can't can't have the All-Star game count for something. The way to incentivize, I, I've always said this, the way to incentivize participation Guys to try their hardest is financial incentives for the All-Star Game. If you want, you know, the winner of the MVP of the All-Star Game gets, I don't know, 200000 bucks or whatever. Like, I think I think that's the way to make the All-Star Games count. I don't think I don't think impacting the standings or, you know, the, the championship is, is the way to go. Uh, I would agree with you. The All-Star Game is a showcase, right? It's, a, it's a, an event, a TV event at that here. So to make it count in any way is just idiotic. In my mind, whoever wins interleague play should get home uh, field advantage. If the American League wins the most games in interleague play, they get home field. It's National League. Obviously, they would get it. That's the way I would go with that. But uh, they didn't ask my opinion. But uh, you know, even the MVP is tough because all the players who have voted in, technically the best players, they won't be there at the end. Aaron Judge is starting the game, and he's gone by the third, fourth inning. And then we got three other uh, right fielders, center fielders going in, you know. Otani, long gone, right? Acuna, gone. You know, so I, it's it's hard. It's not like it was in the 70s where the best players played till the eighth, ninth inning. You know, they would play the game. They were the all-stars. But uh, everyone everyone has to play nowadays. All right, I hate the idea of another home run derby if it goes to extra innings. I think that's nuts. Uh, I already saw it last night. I do not need to see it, uh, see it again. And once again, you know, people wonder, because they've already announced who these, these people would be. In the American League, it's Ty France, Julio Rodriguez. I forget who it is, who the other guy is. The National League has more sluggers. I think it's Soto. It might be Soto Acuna and Schwarba. But also, you know, you're asking, it can't be like Aaron Judge and Stanton because they might not even be there in the 10th inning. These guys are starting. They're out once again by third or fourth inning. 
Now, yes, they might stay till the end of the game, but they might not. They might have a flight going somewhere, and they're gone. We've heard this before that these all-star split as soon as they're out of the game here. So you can't have those guys in it. So to me, it's just silly here. I understand you don't want, you know, some pitcher from uh, you know, some all-star or whatever having to throw three, four, five innings. But right. why not designate somebody, you know, who's not an all-star? Let's say from teams that are out of contention, someone on like, I don't know, Arizona or Kansas City, Zach Gallon and, I don't know, Brady Singer. And they would be your designated guys who would throw multiple innings if it goes to extra innings. You want to have the ghost runner? Fine. Keep up with that BS. But uh, to have it another home run derby, I mean, come on. I, I don't need to see it again. It was only like eight hours last night. I actually, I actually love this idea, George. I think we should take this even further. I think, you know, any team that, like, let's say 10 games back from a wild card, uh, you know, they, they can nominate a starting pitcher from their team, not, not for the extra innings, but to start the game, right? To, to, to just do their normal, you know, five, in, however long they go, right? Zach Gallen goes five innings against the American League All Stars or, uh, you know, Brady Singer, Zach Rinke, or whoever, you know, or some, some crappy, uh, you know, Baltimore, I guess the Baltimore Orioles doesn't really matter. But I, I, I think this is an idea that Major League Baseball should toy around with. Guys, we are going to go ahead and run into break here real quick on Fantasy Sports Today. we got some fantasy baseball first half chatter. We have some fantasy football previews coming for you, so don't go anywhere. Stay on the grid, George, and I'll be back here in just a few minutes. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Aaron Rodgers and the, the morning Russell after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell and coast and to BBG, coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game pass. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game yeah, live I all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. A few times throughout this show, we have shown you the over-under for the longest home run hit tonight in the Derby, 491 and a half feet. I am leaning toward the over. Now, last year, we went well over this number multiple times at Coors Field in Denver, Colorado. But of course, that was at altitude. So we go over 491 and a half feet tonight because I think we're going to get close to 500. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. The Baltimore Orioles take uh, Jackson Holiday, who is a shortstop. And according to Keith Law from The Athletic, he was basically one of the guys who did the, uh, you know, improved his draft stock the most over the last 12 months. He uh, Essentially, he got into the gym, reworked his body so that uh, he kind of went from more of a, a contact, even swing plane type pitch to, or a hitter to a, like a power hitter. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Haro with the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game, Inverness Scotland, international flavor. Got a lot of U.S. stories, but how about this one from Cypher, an Australian betting company focusing on high-tech, machine learning, algorithms to be able to generate some significant impact and some analytics that uh, other companies aren't able to do. They raised a first round, raised a second round, and they're trying to figure out how over time to generate some impact that'll talk to the big boys and let them know data analytics is just around the corner. Australian company, but offices in Melbourne and New York and trying to get a foothold with some of the American sports leagues as well. So you have all of the big companies, the found duels and DraftKings, but you also have the back of the house companies and the tech companies, and many of them are international all over across the pond, trying to generate a market edge and new revenue. Great, great. How about 
everyone, and welcome back into Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid TV. I'm Davis Maddock, joined by George Kurtz. No Craig Mish this week, but in his stead, we are going to be talking some fantasy baseball. We are uh, wrapping up basically the first half of the season here. Uh, we're definitely seeing have and have nots in fantasy baseball leagues. You know, your your 10th place team, you're probably not checking quite as much. You're probably not grinding the waivers as hard as you might have been two months ago. So now is sort of a natural time, George, to, uh, you know, take – uh, take a second, stop, look, see who the first half league winners were, see who some of the most disappointing selections were. You know, there there uh there've been, I think, a pretty interesting season in terms of breakouts. You know, we got John Birdie coming off the waiver wire stealing 20 bases. We have some young guys coming up. We had some some uh you know high draft picks already really disappoint. Of course, you know, my guy fourth round pick, Alberto Modesi, not playing this season, but probably to me, I mean, I, this has got to be the most surprising league winner in fantasy baseball I can remember. But right now, Matt Carpenter, if you had the uh, the fortitude to pick him up off the waivers, what an unbelievable beginning to the season he is having for the New York Yankees. Batting 350, 13 home runs, 34 RBIs, 1,300 OPS. I mean, this guy could not record a hit, George. For the rest of the season, you could drop him. He could get hurt. It doesn't matter. He has already boosted you so far up the standings with these stats. I mean, this is like this is really unbelievable stuff. Absolutely. And you figure the the only reason the Yankees signed him, by the way, this wasn't some great foresight that Brian Cashman had, was during that weekend in Tampa they had COVID issues. They had COVID. A couple of guys went on COVID, and they had, they they were short pit players, so they picked up Matt Carpenter, who Texas had just released, and uh, bam. There it goes, right? It's just been fantastic for the Yankees. It's going to be tough for the rest of the season, however, because the Yankees just don't know how to have enough spots for him to play. And that's why they're trying to move him to the outfield now. See if he can play the outfield a little bit uh, in place of, of course, Joey Gallo, who's been maybe one of the biggest busts this season. So uh, I, it's interesting. He's, he looks great, but the Yankees and the Yankees have to put him in the lineup somewhere. He's just too hot not to play here. But uh, it's, it's finding playing time for him is going to mean that someone else has to sit. You know, they've already been sitting. Remember, LeMahieu, Donaldson, Torres, almost one of them sits every night because there's three players for two spots there. Now you throw Carpenter in this mix. Rizzo's not sitting, so he's got a DH. I mean, Stanton has to play the outfield. Well, does Stanton sit? Does Hicks sit? You know, so there's – they, and Aaron Boone's got to play this game. I say Aaron Boone. It's really Brian Cashman who's playing the game because I don't think Boone sets the lineup. I think that's the, uh, the analytics department upstairs. Someone, maybe two someones have to sit every night. I mean, I think probably you're right. What does end up happening is they're just like, Matt, you got to do, if you want to play and we want to keep your bat in the lineup, you you are going to be our left fielder and you got to do the best job that you can out there because having him play over Gallo is fine, you know, especially with the production that Gallo has had thus far. The, the problem would be is you don't want Stanton and you don't want Judge playing center field, right? Because ideally... You would you would probably have Matt Carpenter's bat in over Eric Hicks or Aaron Hicks, but Aaron Hicks is a center fielder and he is a pretty good one. They don't really have another replacement center fielder, so that 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 definitely does become a problem. Or, or maybe they just decide to eat it and they just have bad outfield defense and like you know whatever that that ends up that ends up being fine. But kind of interesting to see what they do. They're also interesting to see what they do at the trade deadline. You know what do they view as some of their weaknesses so they can win. Uh, potentially another World Series. Our next guy, Brandon Drury. I mean, Matt Carpenter at least has been an elite hitter in the past. So, like, obviously it's very surprising. And at the end of his uh, Cardinals tenure was pretty bad. But Brandon Drury has never been the guy that he's been on the plate. And, of course, he plays for this not good team, the Cincinnati Reds. You know, they are not a, a winning team. Um, you know, they do play in a very good ballpark. Great American ballpark is very friendly for power from both sides of the play. But Brandon Drury, uh, either very late round selection or not even being drafted in even 15 team NFBC main event leagues, 18 home runs in the first half of the season and not even killing you with batting average. You know, sometimes with these guys who find the power stroke in the latter half of their career, they completely give up the batting average and they totally sell out for power. But 278 in, in today's Major League Baseball is totally fine for a batter. I mean, Brandon Drury, really impressive first half of the season. Absolutely. You know, I said Brandon Drury was supposed to be a good player, but he just he's been missing that one ability throughout most of his career. It's called availability. All right. He's been hurt a lot. This year he's staying healthy. 
But you bring up one thing here. Now, he plays in the Great American Small Park there, which certainly helps the numbers, right? Odds are, though, we have 15 days until the trade deadline. It's August 2nd, right? 12 days, 14 days. I can't count. Uh, 14 days. So two weeks till a trade deadline here. Odds are he's on the move. Now, that's not to say he couldn't go to another hitter-friendly park. You know, he very well could. But the odds of it being as good as the Great American Small Park, mm, he's also could be that guy that goes to a contending team that doesn't play every day because he can play multiple positions, third, second, some outfield. He can be that, you know, super utility guy for them, you know, a depth player. So that's my only worry about Brandon Jury. He stays with Cincinnati, which is what you really where you want him to stay. You want him to stay with the Reds. I think he'll keep producing. Maybe he's not to this level, Saul Davis, but I think he'll keep producing for you. But I'd also be surprised if he's not on the move. I think Cincinnati pretty much if it's not nailed down, they're trading it. Yeah, I mean, one of the most interesting questions as we head into the trade deadline is what are the Cincinnati Reds going to do with Joey Votto? Does Votto want to be traded? Does he want to, you know, have his his last year, his last 18 months, you know, playing for for some team that is on the edges of competition? You know, do, does he does he value more a chance at a World Series or does he value retiring as a Cincinnati Red more? I think that's pretty interesting. I I could not uh, I I don't know what I would do in that situation myself. So interested to see what's going on there and then now finally we get to julio rodriguez who you know was uh was was different than matt carpenter and brandon jury and that he was not free in drafts and you'll always see this with young guys right uh you know uh, jared kalanick last year bobby witt jr last year bobby witt jr this year you know no no success as a major leaguer was a seventh round pick but whatever your expectations were for julio rodriguez he is blowing by them 380 plate appearances in the first half of the season, 16 home runs, 21 steals, 275 batting average, 351 Woba. I mean, how how high can Julio Rodriguez go in drafts next season? Particularly, by the way, that the Mariners don't look like a laughing stock of a team, right? That's that's a huge part of this. If if he's going to be playing meaningful baseball and he's going to have run producers and and guys who can drive him in behind him, then his value is going to be super high heading into next season. Julio Rodriguez, I mean, wow. Uh, he's going to be the runaway rookie of the year award well, winner in the American League. Sorry, Jeremy Pena. It's just, you're not even close yet. And what a show he put on last night uh, in the home run derby. Uh, Gabe Morenci said earlier in the day that he had ice water in his veins. He thought he might be able to win the thing. Oh, Gabe was right. I mean, what a show there. As for where he goes in next year's drafts, I mean, uh, I have him in my home league. It's a keeper league. I have him in the 17th round. I am tickled pink because I know I get to keep him for two more years in round 17. He's no worse than a second round pick next year. He might be a first round pick because if he's going to steal bases at this rate and you're playing in a uh, you know categories league, wow. And he's a 30-30 guy, minimum 30-30. There's a chance he can get 40-40. I don't think he can get it this year, but next year he can be 40-40. So my God, uh, is he a, uh, a great player right now. He's already a great player. He's going to be a superstar, absolute superstar. Uh, it's a shame the Mariners couldn't quite get it on uh, Jared Klenick, right? Uh, he struggled. He's almost supposed to be just as good as Rodriguez. But Rodriguez has reached all the heights here. He's going to be great for the Mariners. Absolutely great for that team for a decade, you know, two decades to come. They have their new Ken Griffey. They do. And and stolen bases have become so scarce. So Julio Rodriguez is second in baseball with stolen bases. Um, and if you look at the other guys who have stolen, you know, 15 or more bases and then looking at who has double-digit home runs, it's like, Okay, Julio Rodriguez, Randy Rosarena, but his batting average has really tanked. You know, Bobby Wood Jr., Kyle Tucker. I mean, Kyle Tucker, I think, is a pretty good comparison in terms of fantasy value. Kyle Tucker batting fifth for the Astros and everything, but he was a first-round pick because he's got he's going to hit 30 home runs. He's going to steal 30 bases, and that's so valuable in categories leagues. Guys, we are going to go ahead and run into break here real quick on FST. When we return, we are going to do a little bit more by low fantasy football analysis. So don't go anywhere. Stay on the grid. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. 
Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The morning after. Who was your pick for the home run derby tonight, or at least where you think the value on the board is? The value for me would would be with Julio Rodriguez at plus 850. And as I said at the top, the path to get there is very, very important. Pete Alonso is the favorite. He's fantastic at this. We all know this, but going up against Ronald Acuna in the first round is no easy task. I think on the other side for Kyle Schwarber, I think it's a little bit easier for him to move to the second the round. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. A running back who I am not looking to buy as much on is Ezekiel Elliott of the Dallas Cowboys. Had the worst season of his career effectively last year. Played in every single game. Only averaged 4.2 yards per carry. Uh, really ineffective as a pass catcher. His lowest yards per target of his career. Uh, he had 284 touches, 1,200 yards. Did score the 12 touchdowns. The Sports Grid Network. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The early line. Is it almost too on the nose that Kyrie Irving was supposed to show up to the Drew League and left everybody leaving themselves questioning where Kyrie was? Because you're right. Can you imagine? Even though it's a Drew League, we're not even talking about all NBA players. But if they're in the same backcourt here, you know, how he gets, what, a seven, eight, nine assists there in the first half. You know, they're really going up and down the court. Two on one fast breaks. Alley oops here to LeBron James. Only on Sports Grid. Great, great. Hello, everyone, and welcome back into Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid TV. I'm Davis Maddock, joined by George Kurtz, and as Rookies are now starting to report to NFL training camp. We are going to transition to more and more fantasy football talk here on the show. I know Craig is, uh, he felt the tremor in the force as I said that. Craig, of course, loves his baseball. I love my fantasy football. I've been drafting hot and heavy in underdogs, best ball mania, uh, the, the DraftKings tournament. I mean, there there is a plethora of options if you like to draft fantasy football. I believe the, uh, the Atlanta Falcons are the first team to have their rookies reporting their this morning, so we'll see. Uh, you know, probably on Twitter later today, we're going to see some clips of Drake London running some routes. And uh, actually, we have some rookies who are impacting the guys that we're going to be talking about today. We are going to continue our buy low, well, our potential buy low segment here on the program. We have three guys to analyze. Our first one is Michael Carter, who is a running back for the New York Jets. I think, interestingly enough. Michael Carter was a, a fourth-round rookie who was maybe not projected to actually play that much last season for the Jets. They signed Tevin Coleman. They had Ty Johnson. But Michael Carter led the team in rushing attempts, 147 rushes, 639 yards, 4.3 yards per carry. Was actually targeted 55 times in the passing game. I think what a, a lot of us remember about the New York Jets from last season was uh, they did not look particularly good when Zach Wilson – was playing quarterback, but when Josh Johnson and uh, uh, Mike White were playing the quarterback, the running backs were good. Elijah Moore had a couple 20-plus fantasy point games. So very interesting. I think one of the biggest storylines for fantasy football because of how cheap the Jets players are is, is Zach Wilson going to be the guy 
And what is the playing time split between second run rookie Brees Hall and Michael Carter going to be like? Is Tevin Coleman going to work in? Is Ty Johnson still going to be there on third downs? And, and Carter is quite cheap in fantasy football drafts right now. He's about the running back 43 off the board, round 13, round 14. Where are you at on Michael Carter, George? Michael Carter, I think the Jets' offense is going to be better. All right, so I think that's uh, – I don't think that's good for uh, – for Carter, by the way, because uh, once again, Zach Wilson, yeah, he was awful the first ooh, 10, 12 weeks of the season, but he did get better. And when I say by better, he couldn't get much worse, but he did show signs of improvement. All right. Uh, people need to uh, remember back in, uh, you know, I know I, I'm going back to when I you know, I was younger here, but first year quarterbacks did not start from day one or take or even year one. They didn't come in. You, you waited behind the veteran for two, three years to learn the game. Not everyone's going to come in and light it up. Just not, not everyone does that. So I got to give this guy some time here. Heels didn't have the weapons last year. Now he's got better weapons, right? You got Garrett Wilson. Braxton Berrios came on uh, big in the late in the year. I don't know what you're going to get out of Denzel Mims. We got Corey Davis. You got Elijah Moore. They really redid the tight end position. Uzuma, Conklin. So why do I bring this all up? They can throw the ball more. And then you add in Brees Hall, who they drafted. Now, they didn't draft him in the seventh round, and they didn't draft him in the sixth. So if you're asking me, I think where Michael Carter, I think Michael Carter's got some talent, but I think he's going to get screwed here. The fact that they're going to be able to throw the ball more, I think they might be trailing in games more as well. So they have to throw the ball more. You get Brees Hall. I think the best case for Carter is going to be a 60-40 split. And he's on the 40% side here. Maybe, I mean, if you're really lucky, he can be the goal line guy too. Add that to that. Okay, you have some value here. Do I think there's value where he's going? I do, but I'm not talking major value here. I'm not. Every team, or I should say every team, but most teams have a two-back system. So there's nothing wrong with grabbing the second back. Hell, the top back could get hurt, which Hall could certainly do here. Or he may have Tua picking up the blitz. We haven't seen that yet, right? If he can't protect Zach Wilson, he's not going to play as much. You know, we've seen that throughout the league here. So uh, I'm more interested in Hall, but I don't think Hall's going to be like a you know a fourth round pick or anything like that. He's probably more seventh, eighth round for me. So if someone wants to take Hall in round six, then I would rather have Carter in round 12, round 13. I'll take the value there. Yeah, and uh, I suppose it is fairly interesting that Brees Hall is one of the few rookies who has not signed his rookie contract. But again, remember, this th this stuff gets worked out like 99% of this. I can't even remember the last rookie to hold out since um, – the the basically the amount of money you can make as a rookie is already predetermined the way the NFL draft works. No one can be paid above or below slot. It's, it basically comes down to protections and guaranteed. So basically what Brees Hall is asking for is more guaranteed money. I think he will probably get it. I think it's, uh, you know, the team needs Brees Hall to get into training camp and get working because I think you're right. Uh, they, I, I would imagine taking him in the second round, they want him to be their starting running back. They would prefer him to be that 60 part of that 60-40. And another thing you said that I think is very apt is a lot of playing time for rookies is going to be based on how can you function in pass protection. I think that was why Ty Johnson played so much last season, even over Michael Carter, though Michael Carter was playing better, which is Ty Johnson is, uh, I believe, a four-year NFL veteran. He understands pass protection. He understood the scheme, and he kept the quarterbacks from getting blown up. We talked about that uh, yesterday with Ezekiel Elliott versus Tony Pollard as well. Our next guy here, George, just not a guy I like for fantasy football at all. It's Josh Jacobs. He's coming off of his lowest yardage total of his career. Uh, he did miss a game last season. Josh Jacobs, he had 217 rushes, four yards a carry, uh, was actually more involved in the passing game than many people expected him to. It was the most targets of his career, 64 targets, 54 receptions. But in the end, 1,200 yards, nine touchdowns. Kenyon Drake remains on the roster. They took Georgia's Zamir White in the fourth round of the NFL draft. Um, I guess really what it comes down to for me is I think Jacob's usage was about as good as it could get last season with the 64 targets, and he he's fine. He's just very uninspiring to me. I don't really think he's got league-winning potential in him, and I think the addition of Devontae Adams and then the contract extensions for Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro mean that I, I, in the red zone, I think those guys are going to get used really heavily. So I just I, I even in, even in a fifth, sixth round cost, I'm just not that interested in Josh Jacobs. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Now keep in mind, if he's a running back too, I can live with that. But I don't know if the reception is going to be there again. You said he had 54 last year, 20, 33, then 54. That's a big, that's a big jump. 
going well, to 50% jump there. I don't know that he's going to see that again in the 50s. Uh, they had Devontae Adams. Wallace should be healthy all year as well. Remember, he was hurt for a good part of last year. Um, he got hurt first Dallas, so that's going to be interesting. He only had 217 carries last year, which is by far the lowest of his career. He played uh, 15, so he missed two games last year. So I guess there could be something to that as well. But my thing is this. For him to pay off for you, you need that touchdown deodorant, right? I mean, he's at 26 in three seasons. That's averaging nine a career. I'm not saying he can't do it again, but you need that because I don't think the odds is going to be much better than what it is. I mean, what are we hoping for? Maybe he gets to 1,000. He's uh, as high as 1150. Middle was 110, 65. Last year was 872. So what are you hoping for here? 1,000? Not a great, great year there. So you need those touchdowns to come in there. Uh, and I, that's always hard for me to bank on here. I do think they're going to score some points here, but I also think they're going to throw the ball more often. The defense is not great. You know, it's not terrible. But it's not great. We know they play in a very – what looks like it's going to be a very high-scoring division. That's six games where I don't know which run they're going to, have to be able to do with Jacobs here. So I have the same worries as, uh, as you. I just added a, a few more for you. I said I don't mind him if I if I stacked up on for whatever reason I took quarterbacks early. Maybe six points for a touchdown pass early. Go you played a super flex, which uh, means you might take quarterback early. Maybe went bananas on receivers because they're safer than running backs and they are in this day and age. Uh, then I can say, hey, you got job Josh Jacobs as your second uh, running back in the sixth round. I'm good with that. Yeah, I mean, I think those are probably the builds where he makes more sense, where you just kind of need a guy who can grind out 14, 15 fantasy points per week. Our final guy here, I just really don't, uh, I don't know where I'm at on DeAndre Hopkins. So he only played in 10 games last season. He had a nagging injury that crushed his efficiency all year. Now his first year in Arizona, he was phenomenal. Played in all 16 games, 160 targets, 115 receptions, 1,400 yards, six touchdowns. Funnily enough, he actually scored more touchdowns in only 10 games last season. He started out the year with a two-touchdown game against Tennessee. He had two touchdowns against Cleveland on only four targets, but he was, uh, you know, he suffered the injury, and now he is suspended for six games due to a, a performance-enhancing drug suspension, which I guess, you know, to be to be fair here, uh, he has said he, to his knowledge, was not taking any steroids, you know, was not taking any PEDs. Uh, I can't remember what his specific excuse was. I think maybe he said it was something that uh, was like in uh, an allergy medication. Does that sound right? I don't remember what his specific excuse was, but He's still pretty expensive. He's still going in the sixth, seventh round, for example, going ahead of Michael Thomas, who we talked about yesterday. I, I don't know what to make of DeAndre Hopkins. Clearly, he's got a great role in this offense. They do trade for Hollywood Brown that could cut down his targets per game. Where are you at on DeAndre Hopkins? I am the definition of out on, Andre, on DeAndre Hopkins. There's no way I'm dealing with this. When was the last time we've seen a player who's been suspended to come back and did some damage? All right. I mean, they always seem to get to that soft tissue injury because they're not quite in shape because they've been out. No, no, you want him. He's all yours. Missed the first six games. The Saints, uh, Saints. The Cardinals also have a bye week in uh, week 13, so he's not going to play that week for you if you need to win the, uh, that week to get into your playoffs in fantasy. Uh, their fantasy matchups are not good. For weeks 14, 15, 16, New England, Denver, Tampa Bay. Where's, the, where's your upside here? Week 7, they're playing New Orleans. Week 11, they're playing San Fran. He's got a match against the Chargers, the Rams. No, no, there's no value. I mean, listen, if he falls down to me where everyone forgot about him, he's there in round 11, round 12, fine. But if you think I'm taking him anywhere near, I'm taking him over anybody of any kind of value. I ain't doing it. It's all yours. I forget what play we were talking about yesterday where I said, I'll let him be, uh, let him be someone else's problem. That's what Hopkins is, someone else's problem. Yeah, uh, you're right. By the way, if you're drafting on MFL, my fantasy league, the way they have their rankings sort of DeAndre Hopkins is way down there. Uh, I think I think in my Scott Fishbowl league, he went in the 11th round, obviously a little bit of a different format there, but there I, uh, I do like him. But guys, we're going to go ahead and run into break here real quick on Fantasy Sports Today. When we return, George and I will be coming at you with Fantasy or Reality. See you in just a moment. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. 
Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The morning after. Who was your pick for the home run derby tonight, or at least where you think the value on the board is? The value for me would would be with Julio Rodriguez at plus 850. And as I said at the top, the path to get there is very, very important. Pete Alonso is the favorite. He's fantastic at this. We all know this. But going up against Ronald Acuna in the first round is no easy task. I think on the other side for Kyle Schwarber, I think it's a little bit easier for him to move to the second the round. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. A running back who I am not looking to buy as much on is Ezekiel Elliott of the Dallas Cowboys. Had the worst season of his career effectively last year. Played in every single game. Only averaged 4.2 yards per carry. Uh, really ineffective as a pass catcher. His lowest yards per target of his career. Uh, he had 284 touches, 1,200 yards. Did score the 12 touchdowns. The Sports Grid Network. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The early line. Is it almost too on the nose that Kyrie Irving was supposed to show up to the Drew League and left everybody leaving themselves questioning where Kyrie was? Because you're right. Can you imagine? Even though it's a Drew League, we're not even talking about all NBA players. But if they're in the same backcourt here, you know, how he gets what? A seven, eight, nine assists there in the first half. You know, they're really going up and down the court. Two on one fast breaks. Al Ups here to LeBron James. Only on Sports Grid. Hello, everyone, and welcome back into Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid TV. I'm Davis Maddox, joined by George Kurtz. Before we get into fantasy or reality, I need to remind everyone to follow at Sports Grid. And at Sports Grid TV on Twitter, you can also follow Sports Grid on Instagram. You are going to get all the best news, notes, injury highlights, analysis, everything that you need to keep up with the sporting world. All the good viral content makes its way over to the Sports Grid feed. So if you're following at Sports Grid and at Sports Grid TV, you are not going to miss out on anything. You're going to know all the stuff that you need to know to keep up with the world. You're going to get highlights from this show, Pharrell Coast to Coast, the morning after, all the good stuff that we have going on here. George, did you watch the entirety of the Home Run Derby? I'm very curious. I I just watched Pujols' round because that was the only one that I cared about, so I missed out on the uh, the Julio Rodriguez show. But, you know, it's just kind of the way sports works from now. I just care when uh, when I have action on it. And, you know, that, that that is what it is. But were you were you watching the Home Run Derby? Well, I'll need a ruling on this. I did watch it, yes, and I watched the entirety of it, but I recorded it. All right. I uh, had to pick up my daughter from uh, track at 8.30, so by the time I got to it, it was 9, and it's the best way to watch, by the way. Fast forward the commercials, you fast forward all the BS. It started 20 minutes late, right? So I did see all the hits, absolutely, but I didn't watch it live. I think I may have caught the last round live. Yeah. Okay. What about what about the All Star Game? I actually think the Home Run Derby is like a little bit more interesting than the All Star Game. But will uh, will the All Star Game be on George Kurtz's television or iPad or second screen? Will you be Will you be tracking the Major League Baseball All Star Game? 
What, what else am I going to do tonight? You're damn right I'll be watching the game. Do I care? No. What, will I have a, uh, some money on it? Yeah, National League on the under, by the way, is where I'm going. Uh, but, you know, it, it, I, listen, I'm not a big fan of it. I'm not. I don't. Listen, I have no really rooting interest other than where my money is. But I'll be watching it. But if the wife wants to uh, we're watching Yellowstone, we're binging that. If she wants to watch it tonight, then you put it perfectly. It'll be on the second screen. You know, I have no problem doing that. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, when the Royals were good, uh, I, I did watch. Like, I remember wanting to see, like, Hosmer and Moustakis' plate appearances. Uh, and, and then remember that was that year that the Royals fans stuffed the ballot boxes and voted for our entire uh, starting outfield to be to be in. Like, that, I cared then. I mean, care, I guess, is, pro- is maybe a little bit overstated. But I watched. And I was like, yeah, I want to watch my guys. But when the Royals stink and uh, Andrew Benintendi is our is our candidate like i i don't care i i truly do not care so this will be a a second screen experience for me if at all and now we're going to go ahead and get into fantasy or reality All right, we are starting off here with a, a time-honored tradition of the uh, the old-timers game. And I, I think this is cool. It's actually more of a tradition uh, across the pond over in Europe. They do these charity matches for the soccer teams, and they'll bring back, you know, uh, David Beckham will come and play, and all these great, you know, Manchester United and, and Real Madrid, and the 50-year-old guys will suit up, and they'll go run around the field like they did when they were kids. But this happens here uh, in the United States as well for baseball because uh well it's you know it's old timers can still play baseball i I don't know how entertaining an old timers football or uh, or hockey game would be uh but they definitely do these old timer games in baseball looks like we have a nice little image here of some of the uh the yankees fellas getting into their old pinstripes taking a selfie we love to see we love to see the boomers uh jason giabi with the uh the huge neck there so uh fantasy reality george you will or have tried to attend the old timers game for your favorite baseball team, fantasy or reality. Now, as people can see behind me, I am a Yankees fan and I had a chance to go to this year's game. So, uh, uh, and I wanted to go. It's a long day at the park, mind you. Keep in mind, you know, it's mid, uh, Yankee all star game is July, th- uh, sorry, old timers day is July 30th this year, Saturday afternoon. So uh, you're talking, you're going to be there five to six hours. You're going to watch all the festivities, but they're not going to play. The Yankees are not going to play an old timers day game. They're just going to have ceremonies this year and introductions and all that, but they're not going to have an actual game. Uh, so that was enough to make me, okay, I'm not going then. If you're not going to have the actual game. Also for me, uh, I mean, you want to run through my favorite players. Uh, Greg Nettles from, will not be there. Thurman Munson obviously passed away, so he won't uh, be there. Uh, Rich Gossage is not invited back anymore because he, you know, get off my lawn about uh, today's relievers and how they only have to go pitch one inning. And he's yelling at uh, Mariano Rivera, so they don't have him back. Paul O'Neill will be there. You know, Derek Jeter, I doubt, would be there. So uh, I decided not to go. I'm actually going the next day on the 31st, so go figure. But uh, I think I think it's, it's great. I think the Yankees do it very well. Not all teams do. Uh, I said, so uh, it's a reality to me. I've been before, and I came real close this year. The other reason I didn't go is I think uh, our boss would have a heart attack if I took Saturday off, and I need a couple of Saturdays off after that for my daughter's birthday. So uh, work also came into it as I didn't want to uh, take two two out of three Saturdays off. Yeah, um, so this is this is a semi reality for me now. If I so so I live in St. Louis now. I don't live in Kansas City where my favorite baseball team plays anymore. Would I plan out like a weekend trip to go see the old timers game at uh, Kauffman Stadium? That is a fantasy. Like no way, I'm I'm packing up and getting someone to watch my dogs or whatever for that. But if I was already in Kansas City and the Royals were playing, and I could go, and, you know, George Brett would be there, and Todd Sweeney, and all those guys, I would I would go do that, right? That would be uh, that would be entertaining to me. I, I mean, Brett, George Brett is, like, a hilarious guy, uh, he, and he's, like, huge in Kansas City. Like, he still does a bunch of stuff and charity work and, and is around the team and everything. So I would go to that, but I'm not uh, – I mean, pretty much the same thing as you. It's, like, I'm roughly interested in the idea, but I'm not going out of my way. I'm not making this, like, my, my entire day – to uh to go do it so i have i guess i guess that's fantasy in the end but i would i would try i would try to go so that's where i'm at in the end yesterday we got a report uh from ian rapaport at rap sheet on the nfl network that jk dobbins may 
not be ready to play in week one for the Baltimore Ravens, to which J.K. Dobbins then took to Twitter. And, uh, you know, it's actually a pretty bizarre tweet about, like, I'm not going to post a video of of what me and Jesus are doing because you guys won't understand it. Long rant. Uh, The rant to which I understood Dobbins basically being like, these guys don't know what they're talking about. My body feels good. I'm going to be, I'm going to be ready to go. I'll be ready to play. So fantasy or reality, you are more likely to draft J.K. Dobbins in fantasy football after his Twitter rant. Fantasy or reality, George? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was a strange rant. You know, he's all made it rap for reporting. Why he cares is beyond me. Why do you care what he's reporting? All right, you're going to play or you're not going to play. I doubt they know it's July, oh, July 19th here, so we got seven weeks until the season starts, give or take. Uh, so no, I doubt the play, uh, the team knows. Even if he does play, I don't think he's going to get his full allotment of snaps that he normally would for week one, maybe not the first quarter of the season. Uh, the truth is this. I don't care what he said. All right, one way or the other. It doesn't change my mind one little bit because – I think he has some say in this, but the team, the team doctors have the ultimate uh, uh, say here. He's a running back two for me this year. Uh, probably right now a l- lower end running back two. I think I have him at 17 on my uh, rankings offhand here. So I'm interested in him. But I didn't move up to 14 or 12 because of what he said yesterday. I don't care. Good for him. You know, I, I like the confidence. You know, I'm sure I have him. I played a bunch of best ball like you already. I'm sure I have him in a league or two. So I like the confidence. I think he's going to come back in week one. That's fantastic. Love to hear it. But because you said it, I, it's, this to me is on the same line. I'm the best shape of my career. You know, everybody says that. You know, I don't move the players up because they say it. You know, it, I might if people were more truthful sometimes. Well, you know, Dave, I, I was on the, uh, the banquet circuit all offseason, man. I was eating like a pig. Uh, Leonard Fournette come to mind, 260 pounds. I didn't train at all this year. I didn't care. I would love that honesty, right? That would be great. Then I would believe more what the players say. But they all, they're all great shape. They're all doing fine. They're all boss, uh, $6 million men. Um, I guess in this day and age, $60 million men. So, uh, no, I just don't care. It's a fantasy for me. Yeah. So I, I actually have reality, and it's not because of the tweet or anything. It just is going to coincide this way that I think Dobbins is going to start to fall a little bit in drafts because of this, of this rap sheet report that he's not ready to go by week one. And I also think, you know, now that training camps are starting, rookies are reporting and all that, I think we are going to get a, uh, you know, the athletic, uh, you know, one of the the beat writers there is going to write the article about, oh, you know, they bring in Tyler Beatty, they draft him, they sign Mike Davis, and their plan is to start the season with, you know, a timeshare, right? Mike Davis is going to play on some third downs. Gus Edwards is going to be in there. Because this injury that J.K. Dobbins had, he did the ACL-MCL combo, which is pretty difficult to come back from so small small reality for me there finally uh it was announced yesterday that Jesus and Mero, the bodega boys their show on showtime is going to be canceled and i think more importantly these guys are you know known together right you don't get you don't get one without the other but the announcement was that Jesus and Mero will no longer be producing content together took a lot of people uh, I mean, I think a lot of people were surprised, again, because you just know these guys, they go hand in hand. You don't think of one without the other. So uh, I, George, I got two fantasy realities for you here, George. One, fantasy reality, you were a fan of the Bodega Boys. And two, fantasy reality, you knew who the Bodega Boys were before this fantasy reality. I'd love to get a, a little, a quick little poll here of who thinks I actually knew who these guys were before maybe, I don't know, 18 hours ago, I think Brett sent us a text, or Brett's our producer, about these guys. I had never heard of these people. All right, there's this duo. I'm sure they're talented. I think you mentioned they were on Showtime. I don't even have Showtime. All right, so even if I wanted to watch them, I, I couldn't. Uh, no, no idea. When, when this is on, I'm like, are they singers? You know, some kind of talk show? You know, what, what's? I have no clue who these people are. None. All right, they look fun. There's a couple of good guys to hang out with, but other than that, I have no idea. So, no, both are fantasy. Like I said, never heard of them before yesterday before I got the text that this was coming on the show. Uh, I, I got nothing for you. I couldn't even tell you what the show's about. It could be a big sports show, and I wouldn't know. No freaking clue. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, so reality – I do, I do like the Bodega Boys. I do, I do enjoy these guys. They they produce some pretty hilarious Twitter content in the past, and their their show on Showtime is pretty good. Now, again, it's like it's like most things that are are live TV that you need to be watching. Like 
I'm not, this is not appointment viewing for me the same way that like, if you ask me like, oh, do you like LeBron's show, The Shop? I'd be like, yeah, you know, the the things that I've seen from it, Durant's been on there, some other pro athletes have been on there and said some interesting things, but I'm not going out of my way to go turn that on and watch it live. Uh, but yeah, reality, I am, uh, I am generally speaking a fan of these guys. I think they're pretty funny. Uh, the, the, what's, I, I think what's most interesting about them is they are such like a, a New York group of guys, like so much of their comedy and references are like, like bodegas, like how, how many cities in the country have bodegas, like Chicago and New York, maybe, maybe LA has bodegas. I don't, I don't know about the classification of, uh, Los Angeles bodegas, but it's not, it's not really a big thing, but yeah, I do enjoy them. But, uh, you know, also some of their stuff kind of gets lost on me because uh, I don't I don't live in New York and have only been there once and don't know a ton about it. Uh, but yeah, reality, like Jesus and Meryl, very interested to see what comes next for those guys. I wonder, um, you know, I wonder if they're still going to stay in the realm of sports. I wonder if one of them got a, a big offer from ESPN or Fox Sports or something like that, and the other one didn't want to go. Always kind of interesting. Uh, it's just interesting when a creative tandem gets uncoupled, then what do they end up doing? I always think of, of Bill Oakley and Josh Weinstein uh, from The Simpsons when it comes to that stuff. But guys, we're going to wrap up Fantasy Reality there. Going to go ahead and run into break here real quick on FST. When we return, George Kurtz and I will be doing what we always do to end the show, the Sports Grid 60, so don't go anywhere, stay on the grid. We'll be back for that in just a moment. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full to circle. Them. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for and them. And Donovan being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You can take the money line, and we have to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow! In game live, prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24/7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The early line. What sport do you have where the most talented prospects in your organization are the last ones to come up to the major league level? Because why? You don't want to pay these guys. It's amazing that Major League Baseball gets, there should be an incentive to bring up your youngest players first so you can get them to the major leagues and hopefully, yes, end up winning. Adley Rutschman came up this year for the Baltimore Orioles. It seemed like he's a 36-year-old rookie at this point. Only on Sports Grid. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Fantasy Sports Today. The Baltimore Orioles take uh, Jackson Holiday, who is a shortstop. And according to Keith Law from The Athletic, he was basically one of the guys who did the, uh, you know, improved his draft stock the most over the last 12 months. He uh, Essentially, he got into the gym, reworked his body so that uh, he kind of went from more of a, a contact, even swing plane type pitch to, or a hitter to a, like a power hitter. The Sports Grid Network.
Hello everyone and welcome back to Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid TV. Quick update, the NFL is now reporting, well, insiders are reporting that the NFL now expects a two to eight game suspension for Deshaun Watson. So keep that in mind as we head into our Sports Grid 60. All right, now uh, looking quickly through my Twitter feed here, I can't see anybody big time reporting that, by the way. It's not coming from Rappaport or Schefter that it's two day games, but let's just say it is. I'm going to find it very interesting what happens next, because remember, either side can appeal this, including the NFL side, which I find strange. Why I find it so strange is guess who hears the appeal? Goodell or a designated representative that Goodell names? And I got to think Goodell wants to hear this. So uh, and he can, he can raise it. Right, go from eight to seventeen. You know, they, the NFL wants a full season. I don't think the NFL wants Watson on the field this season at all. Actually, I think the NFL would like an indefinite suspension because I don't think they're all that happy that even if they do, he only loses a million dollars as that contract was uh, structured so that he wouldn't get hammered this year. So I'm going to find it very interesting to see what the next step is going to be, assuming this report is true that it's only going to be two to eight games, which I find incredible that it can only be even if it's eight. Incredible that it could be that low. Yeah, the Watson stuff is very strange to me because, I, you know, on one hand, uh, clearly it, it seems that the NFL wants a lengthy suspension, but then on the other hand, like a lengthy suspension is is bad publicity, but is it really bad publicity if you show that you're harsh on crime? Like it's it's all such a, a mind-melting experience. And really, at the end of the day, you realize that the thing that really matters to these organizations and the thing that matters to the NFL is the almighty dollar, right? If, if there was no moral outrage, Deshaun Watson likely would not be suspended at all because he has not received a, a criminal charge. The only reason they're pondering suspension is because they know people are going to be upset about it. So a great reminder to not look to professional sports leagues for our morality. Guys, we are going to go ahead and get out of here. Stay on tune to Sports Grid for the rest of the day. Thank you to George. Thank you to Brett. Thank you to everyone over at LTN. We'll see you back bright and early tomorrow morning.